with White Tail Ham and Outfitters, and I wanted to show you really fast how I'm going to cook this venison backstrap tonight. Um, it's super easy and it's great for a night like tonight. It's cold and um, I don't have a lot of time to make dinner, so this is a very easy, simple, quick recipe that you can use if you've got a venison backstrap. Tonight I'm going to make country fried venison. So it's basically a um, thin sliced piece of venison, breaded and pan fried, and then I make a white gravy to go with it. Um, everybody always loves this. Let me show you first what I did. When I got the venison backstrap, I always um, trim all of the silver skin and the fat off of the venison. That is super important. If you're working with beef, um, the fat gives it a good flavor, but if you're working with wild game like venison, the fat and the silver skin is definitely something you want to remove because it'll make it taste really gamey. So as soon as I got the venison backstrap, I trimmed all of that stuff away and I put it right into milk and spices. Um, you can use whole milk, buttermilk, whatever kind of milk you have, and whatever kind of spices you like. Um, definitely salt and pepper, I would say. So this has been marinating. I like to marinate it overnight if you can. Um, you can even put it in the milk and marinate it in the freezer if you're not going to use it right away, and then just um, pull it out. Actually, this one has been in the freezer, so now it's thawed out and I'm ready to work with it. Let me show you what I did. I've already got some um, thinly sliced right here. But I just want to show you how tender the milk makes this meat. I mean, your knife just goes straight through it. I'm gonna cut it thin into little medallions. That's probably like a fourth of an inch. My husband likes the meat thin and the breading thick, so that's kind of how I've always done it. You can even use your fingers to work it a little bit. If there's any fibers in there that you feel like you need to break down, your fingers are your best tool. You don't have to have a meat mallet or anything like that. Just go ahead and use your hands. After I get the meat sliced thin, um, rule of thumb for me with breading anything, I always put it in dry and then wet and then dry. Um, your dry ingredients can be flour and your egg, um, can be your wet mixture or milk or butter or just anything wet that's going to bind your dry ingredient to it. So tonight with this, I just put some flour in here and I put some panko breadcrumbs in here too because the panko breadcrumbs keeps everything um, very crispy after it comes out of the oil. So I've got the flour, the panko, and I put some cracker crumbs in there too just to give it like a buttery cracker flavor. I just thought it would be good. So I'm gonna take this venison um, backstrap and I'm gonna do it right into the dry. I season this with a little salt and pepper, but again, you can add um, any kind of spices. You can put steak seasoning in there, garlic powder, onion powder, whatever you want. Then I'm gonna dip it into the egg and back into the dry. So dry, wet, dry. Just always remember that. Like I said, the guys around here, they like it, um, the breading really thick, so I'm gonna even go back in there. You kinda double dip it, it's fine. So I've got one there. I'm gonna do a few more, and then I'm gonna show you uh, how I cook it on the stove top. Over on the stove top, I can hear that I've got my butter and vegetable oil mixture getting um, nice and hot. About 350 degrees is what I like to bring it to, but if you just want to drop a piece of your breading in there and it sizzles and it starts to bubble, then you know it's hot enough. I like to use um, vegetable oil and butter when I'm going to shallow fry something on the stove top because the vegetable oil keeps the butter from burning, but the butter adds a great flavor. So I, I like to uh, do about half and half of both. Okay, I've got three pieces of the venison, nice and breaded. Let me wash my hands really quick, and I'm gonna take it over to the stove top and start frying. Okay, I think it is ready to go. Drop it down. It'll just start to sizzle just a little bit. That's what you want, because you don't want the, the outside to burn and the venison to not be cooked through. So we're kind of just gonna gently fry this. I'll put my three down in there. I like to do about four minutes per side on anything fried. So I'm gonna give it four minutes per side, but you wanna check for a nice golden brown color. That's when you know that it's um, done. If, you're, if your venison is thick, if you like a big thick piece of venison, you might even have to pop it into a 350 degree oven for a little while, just so that your venison is cooked through. But venison is so lean anyway, and it doesn't have a lot of fat, so you don't want to overcook it. You don't wanna, um, cook it too long at all or it'll dry out. A little bit of pink in the middle is just fine. So I'm gonna check on these because they look like they're getting a good color. That is perfect. That is exactly what you wanna see. 
This is a great way to do an appetizer too. If you wanted to do like little fried venison um, tenders, that would be perfect too for an appetizer. Maybe dip it in ranch, dip it in gravy, honey mustard, ketchup, whatever you like, it's fine. So I'm gonna let this go for about four more minutes and then I'll come right back and I'm gonna show you how to make the gravy. Okay, it's been going for about four minutes per side and it looks absolutely perfect. Nice golden brown. All the breading stayed on the venison. Now something I love to do, I think, which is really important, you might think I'm crazy, but everything I fry now, I always put honey on it. Anything that's breaded, I love to drizzle a little bit of honey all over it. And then to that honey, I'll sprinkle sea salt. I swear this little trick right here makes your guests love it. So I'm gonna set it to the side. And in the same pan, I don't like to wash dishes, so I'm just gonna use the same pan to make the gravy. I don't need all of these drippings that are here, but I do wanna reserve about a tablespoon or two. So I'm just gonna drain some of this uh, oil off. And you can save that, because you can use that for a gravy another day. If you're not gonna be frying something, but you just wanna make a gravy, you can um, save that and use it the same way that I'm gonna show you. So I've got my uh, stove top still on like medium to medium low, and I've got the drippings. To the drippings, I'm going to add flour, and this is gonna make your gravy really nice and thick. It's kind of like a roux, they call it. So about how much drippings you have, or you could use butter, again, if you want, um, you wanna put the same amount of flour in there. So if it's two tablespoons of drippings, you wanna use about two tablespoons of flour. If something to stir it together, is fine and you want to get all of the drippings and the flour incorporated. You want to let this cook for at least a minute. You want the floury taste to cook out. So give it about a minute and it'll start to get nice and thick for you. Bubbling up. So this is cooked out just a little bit and it's gotten thick. To this I'm going to add milk. Super simple. Put the milk in there. Here it's sizzling. And any kind of gravy you want to kind of babysit it and stir it continuously or it'll get really lumpy on you. So now that I put the milk in there, I'm just gonna stir so that I don't have any lumps. I might like, turn up the heat just a little bit. With a gravy, you wanna make sure that you have plenty of salt and pepper. It's just really important. But you can put other spices in there too, like I told you earlier. Just make it to your taste and cook for your guests. If your guests like it spicy, put some um, hot sauce in there, red pepper flakes. That's always good too. Some salt and pepper. Okay, I stirred this for about a minute and you can see how nice and thick it is. It's the perfect consistency. And I just tasted it too and the salt and pepper is just right for me. And um, so I'm gonna turn it off. I'm gonna take my venison. If you're serving it to guests, you always wanna make it pretty. And this plate will just be my husband's, so. I'm going to put the venison there, the gravy. He likes a lot of gravy, so I'm gonna pour it on. I might make some mashed potatoes or some rice here in a little bit, because it's just a great starch to soak up the gravy, too. And a vegetable, always. But that is just so perfect, and it's so quick and easy, but special for your guests. Take a little rosemary just for some green color. I hope um, this helps you. So I don't want you to be scared if you get venison. I want you to know tons of ways to cook it. I would say very important is to trim off all the fat and the silver skin and to marinate it. Then from there you can kind of play and you can um, get creative and do whatever you like. I hope you enjoy this and I'll see you guys next time.